Welcome to astronomy, <clears throat> astrophotography travel part three, the final part of this particular trilogy. And I have to say, finally had some great success with this Evo Guide 50 ED. The, um, it took a lot of finagling with getting the right material. I told you before that the flat, the field flattener that uh, came from Skywatcher for this telescope did not focus with any of my cameras. So what I did is I went to Starizona and I purchased theirs. It's the Evo FF field flattener and it works great. And you'll see the results at the end of this video. But essentially, um, it's a 1.25 nose piece field flattener. It allows me to put 1.25 um, filters on it. And then it fits into the telescope itself without any of the extensions that you normally use. You'll tighten this down directly like so. And then I found that the cap that came on the actual um, field flattener for Evo, or for the uh, Skywatcher, actually fits on this. So when I'm not using it, I just simply put that on and I've got everything secured from dust and so forth and so on. But using a camera with it, what I had to do is I took a 21 millimeter spacer and a 16.5 millimeter spacer, which comes with the ZWO cameras when you buy them, but they don't fit together. So what you have to do is you have to buy a spacer, a 58 millimeter to a 52 millimeter, that fits inside the 16.5 that allows you to couple the 16.5 and a 21 millimeter together. And then once you do that, you can screw it on to the, your camera and then the camera, the spacer, screws on to the telescope directly. And then you use, of course, you use the helix focuser here to get your focus. And it gives you a really nice flat field across the whole thing. If you remember from part two, it looked like you were looking in a bowl because the coma was really horrific without a field flattener. This took care of that. So now, this is all I need. All this stuff here didn't work. So, it goes on a shelf. And this is now great for traveling. And on top of that, when I do travel, I simply unscrew this off the telescope. Take off the spacers. Put my cap on the camera. Put my cap on the scope. And then what I do is, if you remember the AZ GTI mount that I had in EQ mode using the ASI Air Plus or Pro, either one, um, all that uh, gained together, you know, I was getting, you know, the EQ go to plate solving the whole nine yards. And all of that fits in this case. So essentially, the scope fits down in here, like so. Let's put the straps across to help secure it. Camera fits in here. Spacers sit over here, and here like this. I have my ASI Air Pro here. I keep my plus with my other telescopes. The spacer you saw it sitting on, the actual AZ GTIs in here, everything's in this one case. And it's ready to go. Got wheels on it, handles, easy to transport. So there you have it. Great setup, small, portable, I take two black cases. This one has the telescope in it and all and the mounts. The other one has my DLSR for my daytime stuff or nighttime stuff if I choose to do so. There is an adapter 
uh, you just use a standard T-mount for a Canon to mount the um, camera, the DSR, to that same scope with that same fill flattener. Works perfect. However, I have a full frame camera, so it vignettes. The vignetting is really, really bad. So I'd have to crop in if I want to use any actual data uh, using a DLSR. But this setup here is outstanding, works great. At the end of this video here shortly, you'll see the results I had. If you go back to part two and take a look at that, you'll see a thousand percent uh, change in improvement using that fill flattener from Starizona. I highly recommend this. If you're looking for something small, portable, easy setup, the scope, the mount, the ASI Air, it's a perfect match. Thank you for watching, and I will see you out there.